Greetings Wham subscribers, my name is Jordan. I haven't been on here for a while, but I wanted to reconnect with you. Uh, as you may recall, I was a former communication supervisor at WashDOT, but lost my job like many of you in October of 2021. It's been a tough past couple years for my family, as I'm sure it's also been for yours. Uh, but progress is being made, and that's why I'm here today. So initially I was denied unemployment benefits, but I had an opportunity just recently to appear before a judge to appeal that decision. So wanted to tell you a little bit about uh, my experience and, uh, and what happened. I'm going to step back though and kind of give you some context so you understand kind of what led up to this point. I'm going to refer to some notes here, um, so just bear with me. Well, in August of 2021, that's when the vaccine mandates kind of came down. Um, and so I asked HR at that time some very pointed questions about those requirements and what it would mean to get those vaccines. Well, they were quick to give me a whole bunch of non-answers at the time. And within days, actually, I was placed on administrative leave. Nothing was actually written down as to why, uh, but I was placed on home assignment. My work laptop was taken from me, my work cell phone, and I even lost lost access to my work email. Um, so I was completely locked out of all of my WashDOT accounts. Well, I assumed this would pass and that I would eventually be back to my job, so I wanted to get ahead of things. So using my personal email, I emailed HR. And I said, hey, I just want to inquire about this, uh, this exemption process for the vaccines because I plan to uh, file for a religious exemption. Well, at that time, they sent me uh, this document, which many of you may have received, um, that was just a very simple form saying yes or no if I have uh, religious reasons why I couldn't get the vaccine. I sent that back. I didn't hear anything. So I decided then to send them another email to try and get ahead of it to make sure that they had all the documentation they needed. So here's that email. And um, I submitted not only my own personal statement uh, requesting an exemption from the vaccine, but I also included this very nice uh, letter from my pastor uh, detailing the reasons why I could not receive the COVID-19 vaccine. So. It was pretty clear from uh, the response that I got from WashDOT, they really had not figured this process out. Um, and I was asked again to fill out that, uh, that initial religious exemption form uh, with just those two questions. I, I assumed they had everything that they need, um, but I was wrong. Weeks later, uh, they asked me to uh, fill out another form. And many of you may have seen this form, a secondary form, pretty in-depth form um, asking how long have you actually held these religious beliefs and several other in basic questions. Um, so I did ask them why they needed more information uh, since I had already submitted a letter from my pastor, a personal statement, and the previous form that they had sent me, um, and thus ensued a back and forth with, with WashDOT HR, um, claiming I was not following the process, asking me what it was about my you know a submission that wasn't valid, um, and so we just kind of left it there. Well, between August and October, WashDOT claimed that they sent me several notices um, that I would lose my job if I did not comply. However, as it turns out, they were sending those notices to my WashDOT email, which I had already been locked out of, so I never saw any of those notices. Um, then it was October of, uh, of 2021, actually October 19, the day after everything went into effect, that I received uh, this packet in the mail detailing uh, the fact that I had received a non-disciplinary dismissal from my job uh, for not uh, complying with the governor's mandates. So. Um, I was really surprised <laughs> since I hadn't heard anything prior to that. Um, and so I immediately started filing for unemployment um, only to find out very quickly that I was actually denied. Um, I did continue to apply for those uh, benefits throughout the months ahead and continued to apply for jobs and even went through a lot of different interviews. Um, and after going through the bureaucracy of um, asking why I was denied, I learned that um, WashDOT claimed that I was fired for insubordination um, and not obeying their mandate of getting the vaccine. And that's actually what they said. So I did the only thing left in my power, and I'm hoping a lot of you have uh, possibly done this as well. Uh, I submitted an appeal to this decision of the uh, Employment Security Office. Well, I want to fast forward to now. Um, I finally got to hear, uh, have my case heard before a judge um, and got to face WashDOT to confront them on uh, their mishandling of my job loss. So I want to tell you how it went. 
Uh, the hearing was held via teleconference. It was myself, the judge, and a representative from Washdot HR. And not just a representative, but a consultant, um, somebody who didn't even work for Washdot at the time that I was there and therefore not even familiar with my case or what had led up to me losing my job. Well, um, they did not even have that firsthand knowledge uh, and needless to say that did not impress the judge. She actually even asked Washdot to call a representative from HR who is familiar with myself and my case and get them on the phone. Well, that failed, so we proceeded anyway and went forward with the case. Um, it began with the judge asking each of us a series of questions about the timeline of events that led up to um, my being fired. Um, I felt very confident in my answers, to be honest with you, and even presented a ton of documentation uh, to substantiate my claims and even the timeline of events of how things happened. The WashDOT consultant, on the other hand, honestly fumbled through every single answer, often stating the wrong information, even making statements like, well, that's just what I was told. <laughs> It was very evident WashDOT was not prepared and they sent this consultant to simply support their own narrative uh, without any evidence to substantiate it. So I want to walk through what the different claims were and what my response is. Um, their first claim said that I was fired for insubordination, uh, refused to follow employers' directions or instructions. Well, the funny thing is, according to the letter that they sent me in the mail, uh, it actually says here it was non-disciplinary dismissal. I wasn't actually fired, even though that's the terminology that they're using. Um, Again, they said refuse to follow the directions or instructions why it submitted everything they needed uh, to, su to support my religious exemption uh, request. Um, they said that in their second claim that the employer gave a final warning that actions would cause being fired. Well, once again, I was on administrative leave for unknown reasons, did not have access to my work email, and therefore I didn't actually receive any of those notices. Um, they said I was fired due to a violation of company policy. Well, I didn't violate any written company policy as provided to me when I became an employee at WashDOT. Um, I was denied, I wasn't even really denied my religious exemption for the, uh, for the proclamation. Um, they never really actually got back to me on what that decision was. They said, too, that I did not comply with Governor Inslee's vaccine for all state workers. Um, well, the, the mandates and actually the proclamation made room for religious and medical exemptions. I was not given that, con that, uh, that courtesy. In fact, nobody ever called me in to talk about accommodations or what we could do. Um, and even further, I was working remotely since the time I started at WashDOT. My job wasn't even on campus, so there was no reason um, not, to, not to file that exemption. Um, they said that I refused to answer questions on the additional request form, um, but I did answer those questions in the statement from my pastor as well as my own personal statement stating why I could not receive that vaccine. Again, all of this was presented before the judge, um, and throughout the process, I provided them ample evidence. I showed them emails, conversations that we had, text messages, even screenshots of things to show that I had provided all the information necessary to WashDOT. And I I honestly don't know why they were continuing to ask for more information uh, regarding my religious exemption. So I felt really good after that hearing. I had given it my absolute best. I felt like I provided clear evidence and uh, to the judge I broke down nearly every single argument that the WashDOT consultant had um, and it was just a waiting game. Well, three days later I had my answer. The judge ruled in my favor against WashDOT. Um, that's to say that now the Employment Security Office actually has to uh, reimburse me for all that lost unemployment uh, that I had during the time that I didn't have a job, um, and that comes out of the pockets of WashDOT. So the letter from the judge was pretty lengthy and broke down everything that we had talked about. Here are just some of the highlights from it that I wanted to share with you. It says here, some of the evidence offered by the employer regarding a claimant's employment and how it ended was primarily hearsay. Hearsay is an out-of-court statement offered as evidence to provide the truth of an assertion made by a party. It's evidence which is not supported by live testimony and it's not subject to cross-examination. An ultimate finding of fact cannot be based entirely upon hearsay evidence. Um, so that was really in my favor, actually, that WashDOT was too cowardly to send uh, a person familiar with my case. 
They also, the judge also talked about uh, misconduct does not include inadvertence or ordinary negligence in isolated instances, good faith errors in judgments, inefficiency, in unsatisfactory conduct, or failure to perform. Misconduct may not be inferred or presumed. Again, they were presuming that I was not complying and that I was being insubordinate. Well, applying the foregoing facts of the case, the judge then says uh, they concluded the employer has not met its burden of proof established by a preponderance of evidence uh, that the claimant was discharged for misconduct. In other words, um, I didn't have access to my emails to, to learn about what was going on, that I was potentially in this situation of losing my job. Um, I did not pr prove to be a burden upon them. I did provide them with the evidence. So in the end, uh, at the end of her judgment, she says, now therefore it is ordered. The determination of Employment Security Department under appeal is reversed. The claimant was able, available, and actively seeking work. I'm that claimant. I was seeking work in compliance with the terms set forth, um, and I am eligible to receive those benefits. And so I'm elated, as you can imagine, um, and it is a victory, but even though it may seem small compared to like the larger picture of the illegal mandates and all the immeasurable losses as a result, um, it's a step in the right direction. And it's a win that I'm definitely satisfied with. So to anybody else that was denied unemployment, if you haven't already appealed, I tell you, appeal it right away. And if you are in the appeal process, keep going. Um, just take heart. Know that it is possible to see justice and have that decision reversed and receive your unemployment benefits like I am. So it's a small step for me, but it's a big step in the right direction for all of us as we work on holding the state accountable and being compensated for what we have been through. So Godspeed ahead, everyone.